Now, we said rainwater is acidic. So you might think since all the water falls out of the sky, it's all rainwater and everything we see sitting around should be a little acidic, but nope. Because once it's on the ground, it's getting involved with anything else that might dissolve in it. There are acidic and there are basic salts. Oh, well, who, who would have expected that? We just think of salts as being a positive ion and a negative ion combining. But no, it turns out that it depends where those positive ions and negative ions came from that helps tell you what effect it will have on a solution once it is dissolved. If you have the anion that came from a strong acid and the cation that came from a strong base, the aqueous solution would be neutral. And an example is sodium chloride because this comes from sodium hydroxide, which is a strong base. Your cation came from a strong base. And the Cl would come from HCl, hydrochloric acid, which is a strong acid. So if you just dissolve plain old table salt in water, you would expect it to be a neutral solution. It's my favorite kind of salt. <laughs> If you have the anion come from a strong acid, but the cation come from a weak base, you're going to end up with a solution that is acidic. All right, well, all right, the acidic is fine. It came from a strong acid, weak base, strong acid. That's overwhelming it. So it's acidic. Just to remember, strong one is going to rule the day, right? Here we have an example. Ammonium ion. Oh, yeah, that comes from ammonia, which we know is a weak base. Chlor chloride ion, oh, hydrochloric acid again, strong acid. What about the other way around? If it comes from a weak acid and a strong base, well, the base was the strong one. It's going to make sure that the solution is basic. What's an example? Sodium fluoride, the sodium came from sodium hydroxide, strong. The fluoride came from hydrofluoric acid, which is a weak acid. And then there's the one that's everybody's favorite. What if they both come from weak situations? Well, guess what? It could be any of the possibilities. It could be neutral, acidic, or basic. Well, that's not much fun. What's going on with that? Here's some examples. Oh, what do they mean? I don't know. I'd have to go look. But we do have these footnotes, A, B, C, right? Okay, here, A, neutral. If the case of A of that weak acid is the same as the case of B of the weak base, it should be neutral. Okay, what about the situation where the case of A of the weak acid is bigger than the case of B of a weak base? That's going to be acidic because the acid one was stronger. It wasn't strong like this was strong, but it is stronger than the base. So, okay, it's going to rule it and it'll be acidic. And it, the last case, if the case of A of the weak base is less than the case of B of the weak. I don't know if I said that right. If the case of A of the weak acid is less than the case of B of the weak base, well, that means this one is stronger. The case of B is stronger. The base is stronger. We're going to end up with a basic situation. That means that you can predict whether the salt will form an acidic or basic solution by thinking about what the reactions were and identifying the strong and weak acids and bases. However, here is a sneaky one. K2SO4, potassium sulfate. Why is that sneaky? Well, let's think about it for a minute. Star 20, I look at it and I say, gosh, K2SO4, how do I make that? Well, I'm going to take two KOHs and I'm gonna combine it with H2SO4. That should work. I should end up with two waters out of that and the K2SO4. That looks like it should be perfectly fine. And you know what? When you're taking KOH apart, it does simply fall apart, right? Into K plus and OH minus. But if you take H2SO4 and you try to make it fall apart, the first one 
will give you, well, I guess I should say I'm putting water in it, right? I'm being bad. I'm putting water in it, so hydronium ion, right? And HSO4 minus. This first one is strong. The second one isn't that strong. Go back and look at the one that we did. This is the second ionization. It is no longer just a one-way trip. It is an equilibrium. So it turns out that you end up with, yes, more hydronium ion, but not all of it because it's in an equilibrium. This is acting as if it was weak on the second ionization. Oh, well then, that means the KOH is always strong and the H2SO4 is strong most of the time, but not all the time. And that means that K2SO4 is going to be identified as forming a basic solution when it is dissolved in water because of that whole business of an equilibrium here, indicating some sort of weakness.